everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I am doing a 30 minute session today, sharing distance energy healing and wisdom with a seven year old. Her name is Nova. I wanna thank your grandpa for booking this session with me. This is the second time I've gotten to connect with Nova and I feel really blessed to have the opportunity not to do it just once, but now twice. That's so cool. <sighs> Nova, I'm going to keep this open to your guides to introduce themselves and share the messages that you need to hear right now. And since this video is basically forever, for as long as YouTube exists for, <laughs> you'll get to watch it throughout your lifetime. I also have some other things that I wanted to tell you based upon your goals. So before I dive into this, if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, go visit my website, abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Let me support you. Let me help you book a session with me. Also worth it. Check out my Patreon community, patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. Okay. Are we ready to get started or what? Okay. I'm scheduling this session for my seven-year-old granddaughter, Nova. She is asking anybody who knows, okay, anybody who knows, am I going to save the world and when? It sounds to me like you know, Nova, that you're going to save the world. And so when you put the power back into your own court that you know and something that's worth acknowledging, that you know this. So when you want to reach out and get my opinion on it, um, we would hope that I would also know what you know, right? <laughs> Just to confirm but you can own it, Nova. You know that you're meant to do great things in your life. And those great things are saving the world already. Just you being you and you just expressing your heart and you finding a way to be even more confident in what that personality of yours is all about. And you roll with it. You're saving the world. So when is it going to happen? It's already happening. I want to tell you an idea that came to me when I was reading your goals. Even as an adult person, I imagine myself saving the world. What would it look like? And what would that mean exactly? It's important to think about stuff like this. If you were to try to describe from your imagination what it looks like you saving the world, and you speak from your own heart here, and it can look and sound like whatever comes to you, okay? Because that's powerful. So you're saving the world. So how does that look? You see a lot of people with happy faces that are thanking you for everything that you did to help them. And what do you want to help them with? And do you feel like uh, people are sad inside? Do you feel like maybe you want to be like a Superman or a superhero? And maybe if you could change, change something in specifically, right? What, what would it be? You could heal the animals, you could heal the plants, you could heal the animals and the plants and the ocean and the humans. You could clean the air that we breathe. Remember that you, Nova, are one person that is going to do great things in your life, but it's, it's okay to be one plus a bunch of other awesome people just like you, and you work together as a team. And who would you like to work with in your life? What would be their special skills? So you would save the world doing this thing and they would save the world doing that thing. And then on the weekend, you can have pizza and ice cream. You know what I mean? Because you did all your saving the world work and you work together as a group and you gotta celebrate it. I also feel like it's important that I mention some things about it's like a responsibility you know it's like the responsibility to clean your room it's hard work right i don't like cleaning my room and i don't want to have to do the laundry and i don't want to do the dishes but i got to do these things and when you live for years and years having to do these things you'll start to feel like it would save your world to just have someone come in and do your laundry for you <laughs> There's different ways that we save each other's lives, but in life, there are difficult things that are very easy to do. 
And then there are bigger things that seem quite difficult to do and we'll have a relationship with it. Like it'll make us happy to do these things and then it will make us not so happy. And saving the world can sometimes feel like having to do the dishes or clean your room. Not that hard, but still an effort. And now you make that effort every single day and you will feel it. You know what I mean? And so you've got to be really strong in your personality and really strong in who you are. Because sometimes if let's say I have one too many things going on and it just feels like I can't do it today, I will hear my higher self tell me something like this. Do you know what you love doing most, Abby? You love helping people. And I say, yeah. So you have these other things to do and that's helping yourself. And then you have these other things to do that's helping others. And look at all the helping that you're doing today by doing these things. And I say, oh my gosh, you're right. And it gives me a little bit of an edge, a little more energy and a lot more joy in doing what I need to do to get through the day. And I need to tell you these things because it's important that we have big dreams that create passion inside of us, right? And it's also important that we remember life is one step at a time too. It's pretty slow. You know, when I was your age, I really looked forward to being old enough to drive a car. And it took way too long for me to get to that age until I was finally that age. Then I couldn't believe it was actually happening already. And so life can sometimes feel like it takes a while, but it'll go faster than you can imagine. Every old person says this. <laughs> and I never understood it until I got older. And then it's a very peculiar thing. You know what I mean? Okay. I just felt like I had to ramble about those things. You're really special, Nova. And keep thinking and dreaming and feeling big because that comes from a really good place inside your heart. A really caring person has these types of big dreams for the world. I had the same dreams myself. And I used to, when I was in college, talk to the universe all the time about the types of things that I wanted to do to help the world. And I just knew that I could define it as this. I wanted to help people understand how to be happy. Because I felt like it was one thing that I understood how to be. Even if I was sad on some days, I still seemed to know what it took to be happy. And I knew because I could feel it. And I could watch people and I would shake my head because they were doing things that were not going to make other people happy or themselves happy. And it was confusing that they couldn't seem to realize that, you know? And I had to be patient because there's some people we're going to get through to it and then there's sometimes we're just going to watch people and say nothing at all. But we're growing, okay? And we're following through with our heart and we know that solid truth, even if it's a simple one, that it is the truth. And I'd be curious to know, Nova, what, what it is that, that you feel like you could do to save the world. Because um, if I could be on your team, I hope I could be that person that could save the world by making people happy. Because that's one thing I know I could do. And maybe there's someone out there that could be on our team that could, could do our laundry for us. <laughs> and that could make us happy. <laughs> and then we could go on to do the thing that we're good at. It's an interesting life. You will find out. You will see what I'm talking about. You probably see a lot already. Okay. All right, I'm going to relax now. <sighs> I'm going to connect with your higher self and your guides, Nova. And I'm just going to talk to you straight, okay? I know you're seven, but there's a lot of seven-year-olds that are really good listeners and are really perceptive and are really smart. And I have a feeling you're one of those. So I'm going to talk to you like you are one of those, okay? Hmm. You know, my right eye 
sees in one way and then my left eye sees in another way, okay? And right now my right eye is going smaller and my left eye is going bigger, all right? And something of a really bright light instantaneously hits. And then I hear kind of like a car and squealing wheels. And I can't see anything at all. And I hear silence. And in the silence, I have to listen for a long time. And I don't use my mind, I don't think about anything. I just listen. In the silence, in the dark, I listen. I start to hear the sound of my heart coming out of this dark place, coming out of this silence. And I still don't have an interpretation. I don't know what it means yet. My right eye is starting to see something. And this is confusing as well because it seems like it's just full of light and then that light is starting to go into my heart but the light is kind of cold. It's like um, when it's snowing outside on a sunny day or even if there's a full moon, you'll notice that it can be quite bright because of the white snow, it's like it reflects the light and it makes it even brighter outside. And it's a cold but bright light, okay? And it's hard to translate it with my right eye. But I know that I have to keep going. I know that there is meaning to this. This is important. I can't conceive of all the ways that this is speaking to your soul right now. An image comes to me about being a man who doesn't wear much in the way of clothing, and really just wears a big old animal fur around my body. And my body is skinny and it's dirty. And I'm in a very cold cave. And I'm actually drawing in the winter time. It's to pass the time. It's something creative that I do to pass the time. And I will say the cave is interesting because if you go to the mouth of the cave, it'll be colder but brighter. If you go into the cave, it'll be darker. And it's almost like when you go deeper into the cave, it can feel warmer and it can feel more silent and more peaceful, more resting. And it feels like a very long time to be patient, but I'm not focused on time. I'm very tuned in to my intuition and instinct. And I don't long for things. I don't long to eat. Mainly because I know when I will have food and when I won't have food. And I've trained my body to understand this. That I'm not going to be eating for a few days. And I don't let that bother me. I already know it's true. This is one meaning of the right eye and the, the cold light, okay? It's just one meaning. Another, I'm on the outside and I'm looking at a face and this right eye is frozen. And then there is ice that kind of builds up upon the face just on the right side. And I also um, see there is a woman here with really long, beautiful blonde hair and it's wavy and thick. And she's pointing at you and you are the one with the frozen right eye, okay? And it is snowing. And right now, you aren't thinking so much as you are just receiving information. And the information is silent. It doesn't come with an emotion or 
um, any anything really to distinguish it. It's completely silent. But she's asking you to acknowledge the way that you feel. But you're a little shy to mention it. You're a little shy about it. Hmm. And it's okay because when you, when you express that I'm shy to answer the way that I feel, you already answered. You said that you were shy. And something of warmth begins to build up and the color yellow appears. And it makes you nervous at first. Because the winter is melting and the sunshine is appearing and it will warm you and it will give you a new experience in life. I'm supposed to tell you something, Nova. It's a very big responsibility to save the world. And it would be like, maybe to a seven year old, it would be like having to mow the lawn and clean everybody's room and organize, I don't know, a bunch of boxes in the garage and fix all the, I don't know, soup up the vehicles and hang some TVs and repaint the whole house and put some new flooring in and do the shingles on the roof and clean every, you know, do all the laundry. It would feel like having to do all of this stuff all by yourself and to get it done in one day. It would just feel like impossible. And this guide is wanting to, to show you that. She's showing me school and how we all learn in our own way. And you will find that there will be friends of yours that really like art. And you'll have friends that like math, believe it or not. My son loves math. It's his favorite subject in school. Of all things, math. Some people love math. Some people love art. Some people love to read and write. I love to write. Don't really like to read so much as I love to write. But I know that reading and writing is the one thing that I have to build relationships with people. And communication is important to me. It gives me the ability to meet someone like you and get to try to tell you what you mean to me and even tell you what my experience is like when I tap into your goals and I experience the other, um, the other side and then I get to share that with you. And I know that this is going to give you a lot to think about. But um, this guide is, is showing you this room and we have kids that like to do all different types of things. Some kids just love sports. Some kids just want to be gamers, okay? Some kids, so everybody has the things that they like. And then when we put these things together, we build the full picture, okay? And so it goes back to what I was saying about when, we come, when it comes to saving the world, I know what my skill is. But I know that my skill is in everything. I need people who are scientists, people who literally can understand what brings balance to the ocean and people that love working with animals and that can help animals. People that um, have brilliant minds that want to focus all their energy in one place and the world needs that. The world needs people who are experts in all different kinds of things. And then when we bring everybody together, we create the picture, the puzzle pieces all put together through each and every one of us, you see. And once all the puzzle pieces are put together, we can see everything in that picture because we'll be able to see and appreciate everybody in the world. And I'm very curious what your puzzle piece looks like and what it is that your strengths are and what you want to do to help the world. And so then we can put that into the puzzle. And there'll be kids that'll say, oh, I'm so glad that um, 
that's what moves you. Maybe you're meant to be um, able to speak between, you know, the spirit realm and the human world and help people in this way. Maybe you're meant to be an energy healer. Um, where there's people that do physical healing with physical medicines, there'll be people that study plant medicines, and there'll be people like me who like to study energy medicines. And so I can't be everybody, right? I can't be um, the, the doctor, the psychologist, the, the plant tincture person, the crystal therapy person, the, the musician, the... Um, the cook, the, you know, and so we get to appreciate bringing everybody together and then we build a strong world together. And so this guide really wants to bring this warmth into your body and it's going to help melt what this ice is about. I'm not sure what it is about yet. But part of the message is like I've expressed here is exactly what you need to hear right now. This is going to help you. Okay. Somebody is like a Frosty the Snowman. I... I keep feeling like there's a frosty, the snowman, and that creates like an icy energy. But obviously, frosty smiles and is our friend and takes us places. Um, but it seems like it creates like a wintry cold, and it's not um, like the warm sun makes you feel comfortable. Um, this is a bit odd here. So I'm just looking at it with my right eye. It's interesting because it's almost like. I really want to use both my eyes, but my left eye is kind of just um, relaxed. Then my right eye starts to see things. And so I turn us, this beautiful woman here who's guiding us, and then you, and then me, and then I just look at this frosty, the snowman. And there's something I don't like about him, actually. He smiles, he looks really sweet, he's Frosty the Snowman, hello, he's freaking Frosty the Snowman, you know, he's our friend. But there's something not right about him. You ever notice those things? Like, you ever notice that there's people that, um, they really seem to be quite nice, but there seems something off about him, you know? That's, you're paying attention. When you notice stuff like that, Nova, you're paying attention. And you need, you need to own that, okay? You have every right to say that. You know, I like, I like that they're happy. I like how nice they are, but something seems off about them. That is the truth. That is saying something. That is identifying something. That is expressing your feelings. Okay, Nova, how do you feel about the warm sunshine? You know, how do you feel about talking about your feelings? Um, I feel shy to talk about my feelings. That's all you needed to say. And the warm sunshine keeps coming out because you said something, okay? So we're just acknowledging we like Frosty, but something seems off here. We're just acknowledging our feelings. That's just simply being honest, right? It's hard to explain sometimes what seems off, you know? It's hard to explain. I'm supposed to help you because something, um, we're going to balance your right and left sides because something, it's like the fact that I keep using my right eye is telling me that we need, I need to open the left eye because it's going to open your left eye more. And so that way we've got balance here between the both sides. Okay. Hmm. When I do that, it's odd because like, I feel like a little bit of jam in my left ear. I just feel it. <laughs> it's like uh, when you're in an airplane and then it just kind of gets like the pressure changes the ear. It's like a little bit of change going on in there. So this image of Frosty, the snowman, he doesn't like it when we say that there's something off about him. He gets angry. And what I love about you is you immediately put your heart out and say, I'm going to melt the ice. I'm going to melt the snow. And you touch his heart and you show that your hand is warm. 
and that it's the snow that was off because he was not actually made out of snow. He's a human. He's a man. And so for the human man to then be made out of snow was actually not right for him. It wasn't a good fit. It wasn't the right outfit. It was actually going to make your life more difficult. So let me melt the snow that you chose to wear today. And then we can see you for who you truly are and you'll feel better. That's what you do, Nova. You literally do this. And he's really embarrassed now. He doesn't like it that you saw that and you exposed that and then you helped him. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like a miracle just happened. Own it. <laughs> you did the right thing. You did the right thing. And maybe that's something you'll notice about the human race. That people are shy to admit the truth and we have feelings that can get in the way. And sometimes our feelings make us um, you know, feel embarrassed or you know, feel like we want to hide under a rock, right? Don't ever hide under a rock, Nova. Just come out and get hugs, okay? You give hugs and receive hugs. And we all make mistakes in life, okay? And we're all learning and growing. So if anything ever makes you feel like you need to hide under a rock, just talk about it. Because there's so much, uh, many of us who would love to hug you and tell you that it's okay to feel that way sometimes. And I feel like this man, when you melt the snow off of him, um, and he feels kind of um, naked, like exposed, uh, it's almost like, you know, he would like to crawl under a rock um, because you saw something and you revealed it, but you tried to help him. And he wasn't ready for all that stuff. Maybe that's what you're meant to do to save the world. Maybe you're meant to see what, what people need. They don't realize they put the Frosty the Snowman outfit on. We're trying to smile and be happy, but really um, they needed to take that off and let the warm sunshine in, which was you. That you were the warm sunshine. That you were going to melt that away and help them feel better. And even if they felt embarrassed or wanted to hide under a rock is because they weren't used to being seen. And you could see them. That's really good. That's really unique. Hmm. It's okay to open this eye. I tell you, it's okay. It's okay to open this eye. And I'm talking to your deeper self, okay? Because it's okay. What happened here? Yes. Better. We're getting there. It seems like you're, you've got two people. Like you've got like a human person and then you have like a strange other body. <laughs> Is unusual looking like, uh, I guess it, what, what would the color be? Maybe brownish, reddish color, more on the brown side. Um, very kind of matte finish, so it, it's not shiny. Um, and it's skin, but it's not like our type of skin. It's more like hard, like an insect, perhaps. The eye is uh, a lot larger, and it feels like there's no white. Um, the whole eye is filled with an eyeball and it's um, like a turquoise, um, bluish turquoise color. And it has like a slit pupil. And it seems quite gentle to me, the side. Maybe it's an ant-like being. Like ants, you know? That they build their little ant hills and they collect things and take it down underground. It's like a little ant person. And this ant side of you is really sweet, really gentle, really unusual and different. I feel like she's a lot shyer and that you have a side that, that has the, a bold enough ability to extend your hand to help this Frosty the Snowman, um, but shy enough that you might... Um, 
I don't know, not be able to speak up about what's going on inside yourself. What is it with uh, these feelings? I'm too shy. Um, seems to be coming from this ant side. That helps. Just when I acknowledge her, when I see her, she suddenly starts to use this I more. You use the I more. But what I do is I take this side off so that you can be you in this life on all sides of yourself. So when you look in the mirror, you are you as a whole. But this ant um, reflection is part of your heart. It's part of your heart. Inside your heart literally is an infinite book bag. It's like Harry Potter with the purse. You know, the girl, she has a purse and then she sticks her hand and she has a whole library in there with all kinds of stuff. You could go inside there and probably see like a whole world in there. Your heart is a whole universe. There's so many people in there. There's so many places in there. And I feel like you're discovering yourself and your identity and who you are, all that good stuff. And this is part of who you are. And so we put this in, in the universe and our little purse in here that's, that's kind of surprisingly large. And we'll find her in here and we can talk to her whenever we like. There's something shy though, something shy. Because even when I bring her into your heart, you're a little bit shy about this side of yourself. So I go back to the, the kind woman with the blonde um, wavy hair and I, I ask her about this. She's talking to me about hot and cold, about light that um, warms us from the inside out. It's a cold can challenge us. Sometimes the cold wants to push us back like the man in the cave to go into the cave where it was warm, it was dark, but it was quiet and it was peaceful, it was a rust space. And so light and dark, but um, hot and cold and our relationship with these um, different temperatures, even in people and in personalities. You ever meet a person who's really cold you know, it'd be like Snow White, her stepmother is really a cold person, right? Because she actually turned herself into a witch, went and found Snow White with the dwarves and gave her a poisoned apple. She's a very cold personality. She could do wicked things, right? That's a very cold person. So how do you face a very cold person? You face them with sunshine and warmth, just like you did with Frosty the Snowman. You do that with human beings and you do that with any invisible people in the spirit realm. And maybe you can see those people. I could always sense those people. It doesn't matter if I could see them or not. So it didn't matter what they looked like. Because what it mattered the most to me is what the sound of their heart sounded like. And I like to be around invisible people where their hearts sounded like they cared about me wholeheartedly, right? That's warmth. That's kindness. That's radiance. That's like the Snow, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, their relationship with one another. It's all about warmth and light and caring and connection. That's what saves the world, right? You know the recipe to this. Yeah, you're, you're talking to her now. And you're talking to her from the left side. And this pressure is starting to disappear. And you're starting to feel way better balanced between the right and left sides. My gosh. Oh my God. Guess what? I start to see a bell, like a church bell. Okay. And it goes back and forth. But when this left side was a bit off, um, they're showing me that it's now uh, starting to be open and there the bell is going back and forth and it's ringing properly. And before it was just like going off to the side and it wanted to go all the way over, but it wasn't able to, so it wasn't quite balanced. And now the bell is ringing back and forth just like this. Oh yeah, my gosh, this feels so much better. Wow. 
Okay, okay, this is good. This is really good. I'm supposed to go back to this question here. How do you face a cold person? First off, you can face them and you can be honest with them. Just like the Frosty the Snowman. You know what? I like your smile. You remind me of friendship. You remind me of Frosty. But something's not right about you. You can be honest with them, right? You can own up to inside yourself. You know what this person needs. And you gave that to them without fear, without resistance. And their reaction to you was their reaction. That's their thing. You came from the, the goodness of your heart to help somebody. And you got to be true to yourself at every turn, okay? No matter what other people do, got to be true to yourself. I find this is a peculiar situation with Snow White and the stepmother, who is the witch at the door, because Snow White was really nice to her and she took the apple because she didn't want to be rude, you know? And then she ate the apple and maybe she was tricked. But maybe she was just trying to help the old woman. But really, she, she found herself in a predicament that she didn't know how to get out of. But she needed to be honest that something didn't look right here. And something wasn't right here. And that it's okay, Nova, for you to, to acknowledge when something isn't right, okay? And don't let it fool you or don't let it put you into a position where you... You would put manners before speaking up. It's, it's something like this, okay? Because you're smart and you see things and you sense things and you can tell. Okay, anything else? By the way, this feels even better still. But we need to kind of move the energy just to make it like super ultra robust and balanced and, and just like beaming from the front and the back above and below all that stuff. So I'm going to go back to this nice woman here. She wants to take us somewhere, okay? It has to do with water. She wants to talk to you about water. And this is just, uh, is, this is important. And it reminds me of um, water, it cleans us, right? So you get in the shower and you can wash the dirt off. You can wash your hair. Um, so water cleans our bodies, it cleans um, our houses, it washes our cars. Water cleans things. And, and then I see water that puts out fire, for instance. So water has properties. It's a tool. So you could go in the garage and see some tools, right? Um, but water too is a tool. It doesn't go in a toolbox, but it is a tool. She wants you to think about how water is a tool and what that means. She's um, wanting me to tell you that water um, can also be an emotion, right? Because when we cry, then water is released from our bodies. So water is also an emotion. So it has something to do with purifying our, our feelings. When we cry, we're actually helping ourselves feel better, believe it or not. And then we can cry with joy, or we can cry with sadness, but we're actually acknowledging openly and honestly a certain way that we feel and we are expressing ourselves openly and honestly, and that is cleansing our bodies. Also, the snow that melted, right, because of the warmth. So water has the ability to become snowflakes and become ice. And people's personality can be icy. Isn't that interesting? Because that's emotion. Icy person is their emotional state, right? And we melt the ice in their personality when we are the sunshine, when we are the warmth. But this is a this can be a conflict because water can put out fire and what is fire but warmth, right? So what does that mean about the relationship between water and fire? And what is the importance of knowing about this? 
um, in saving the world. What is the importance of knowing this when it comes to saving the world? How could you use what you know about water and fire and warmth and ice and cold and hot, light and dark, knowing about these things, how can you use this to help your family, to help your friends, to help yourself in your life? How can you use these to help the world? She's showing you this. She wants to tell you something else that Have fun thinking about it. Have fun discovering about it. And talk out loud about what comes to you, about what water means. Even if it's random, like oh, something came to me about water, I see it now. And you're gonna start to learn so many things that you didn't expect. And you're going to discover it because you're pulling it out of your treasure chest, your purse that is in your heart. And you're going to pull out so much information about water, pull out so much information about fire, so much information about ice, icy people, personalities, emotions, and what makes things clean or dirty, <laughs> what creates the distance between light and dark or cold and warmth. Even in dark places can be warm. It's going to get you really thinking. If she were to tell you everything, um, it's almost like it would be more extraordinary for you to pull some ideas out from inside yourself and then feel so proud of yourself for what you're discovering all on your own. And all she had to do was present you with a few ideas to get you thinking. She's going to give you a few more ideas. And this is a this is a, something I'm going to tell you. So sometimes I'll visualize myself just standing in a waterfall, and I decide the temperature of the water is going to be on the cooler side, and it just wakes me up. So did I interact with water, or did I interact with an idea? You know what I mean. So you could imagine yourself if you were really cold. Um, imagine yourself in a hot shower, a hot bath. Do you feel like it would have the power to warm you up, even if you were in a cold place? That your mind could help you, that your feelings could help you, that your imagination could help you. And to really reflect on this. And even imagine yourself going and visiting the sun sometime. And it's like, I see you, Nova, and you're imagining what it would be like to just go visit the sun and what it feels like there. Everybody would tell you the sun's hot and on fire. What if you discovered the sun was made out of water? I mean, who's to say? You know, these are really good scientific ideas. But when it comes from inside yourself, you might say, no, it's definitely fiery there. <laughs> And it's definitely hot there. I, I really do experience this in my imagination as fiery and hot, okay? But you will find, Nova, in your adventures that you might be surprised to run into something you didn't expect, okay? And those are fun anomalies. But I see you visiting the sun and then just seeing what comes to you about it. And there might be actual people there that want to say hello to you and that you could talk to and that you can let all that sunshine and that warmth in and then just learn from it without having to think too much but have some discoveries the next thing you know a week goes by and it's like oh my gosh the sun the sun is telling me something and then you can share what the sun was saying it's gonna happen like this okay i wanted to tell you all those things in the beginning, I really enjoyed having this experience with one of your guides and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to connect with you again, Nova, and thank you again to your grandpa for booking the session and thank you all for watching and thank you for all your kind comments and your love and support of my clients. Have a great day.